Hi guys and welcome to another disaster detail. Now for today's video I was given just two hours to transform this blue pig which hadn't been cleaned in six months into a beautiful swan and this Range Rover had been used as a dog car so it's got plenty more hairs than a 90s porn star. Plus it had cream leather seats with brown stains. The valet involved was a full exterior wash which included a deep clean under the arches, leather clean and condition, finished off with a ceramic spray sealant to offer a nice shine and added protection. Firstly we have to start by removing all the rubbish out of the car, that includes the mats and the boot flooring. It's always better to work on a completely empty car because it just saves time instead of the starting and stopping and getting bits out and shifting it all. Just get it all empty, just get it done straight away. The first thing I wanted to do was spray the arches and the tyres in a traffic film remover which basically started to break down all the dirt making it easier when pressure washing. If you want to see more videos like this then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell to get notifications as I bring out new videos every week, sometimes twice a week. For the wheels I opted for smart wheels which are an acid free and tough chemical. The wheels aren't actually too dirty so I went for the wash noodle which is a great little tool on the wheels especially with the larger gaps. After that it's time to give the wheels a blast. Now always make sure that you roll the car forwards or backwards just a couple of feet because you want to make sure that you get those bits underneath because there's nothing worse than cleaning wheels, not moving the car forwards and then when you start to drive off you see all the bits that you've missed. And if you want to know all the products that I use in each video then check out the description below as we put all the links down for you. As I said I had just two hours to transform this dirty motor and I know some of you eagle eyed viewers out there will know that this is actually an older video but I did take the previous one down. This is because I may have crossed the line with something I said. Sorry about that. The boot shuts were also really dirty so they needed a good soak and a brush to ensure spotless finish after jet washing. Sometimes you just got to go nuts, not be such a wimp and blast the hell out of them. Most valeters have wet vacs these days anyway. My first job was to go round the whole car and let it dwell and thankfully it was a nice cool cloudy day so I didn't have to worry about any chemical drying or anything like that on the paintwork. With the pre-wash all done it was now time to start the contact wash and the shampoo that I was using today was from a company called D-Max Global and this is a pH neutral shampoo and it offered some real nice slickness to the bodywork. The drying process required a car dryer and some microfiber towels. Range Rovers have loads of tight areas that hold water after a clean so it's vitally important to blast them off otherwise you will get streaks. For me I like to use the towels for larger areas and the car dryer just for the fiddly bits just because the dryer alone can take up a considerable amount of time. I'm so sorry if you don't like the music, I know it sounds a bit like Homes Under the Hammer or one of those crappy property programs you watch when you can't be asked to go to work. If you've got a suggestion for music, whether you want me to get rid of the music altogether or sort of ramp it up, please do comment below because I love to hear your feedback. The best way to clean up rubber mats is to just spray some TFR on them and give them a little tickle before blasting them off with a pressure washer, followed up by a good blow of course. Because let's be honest, who doesn't love a good blow? Moving on to the interior now and it was time to start off by removing those pesky stains off the seats so I used a little bit of watered down APC followed by a brush and a microfiber cloth and again you can also use bog roll that's always good for brown stains as well. Thank you. 
Oh man, there's some seriously fast squirting action going on here. You may think I sped up the footage, but no, I'm actually that quick after a red ball. So G101 is the APC of choice. Now it's a blessing because I tell you what, it can just handle anything you throw at it. It just eats away the grease, eats away at the dirt, and it just removes most marks as well. So it's perfect on steering wheels, like trim, you name it. This is so good. I do occasionally use a little bit on the carpet, but mainly I do like to use Williams Racing Carpet Cleaner just because of the fact it is really tough and it's a great product. So I'm sort of sticking with that one for the time being. Everything was covered in mud. Like I was relieved to have some quality chemicals just to take the pressure off. Like without the chemicals, it is such a difficult job. Like you've got to let them do the work. Like I'm a bit of a lazy bum. So like, I, I hate getting stuck in and getting a bit of elbow grease out. I like a product I can spray on and it sort of makes me look good. I, I love stuff like that. So yeah, G101 is a real top quality product. The footwells just needed some G101 and a brush and I tell you what you'll be surprised how little you actually need to clean a car. There's so much choice out there with chemicals and tools but the reality is you don't actually need a lot to make a car look good. Now it's time for the very worst bit of the car and I hated every second of this bit. This is the boot. Now this boot had more white hairs than Paul Hollywood's chest and the carpet on the Evokes isn't exactly the best either. They use that naff cheap nylon carpet that you find on every single Peugeot. By this point I was saying every single swear word under the sun and it's really hard to remove pet hairs. Thankfully I didn't have to get 100% out as it was sort of a simpler valet for the back and this car was going to be used on more dog adventures anyway. Now interestingly enough I use a car dryer before I vacuum the boot flooring because it was mainly hair and grit so I thought it's easier to blast out all of those with a car dryer which can blast up to 140 miles per hour instead of letting Charles suck it up. Now, as you can see, I'm cleaning the glass with no chemicals, and this is something I often speak about. And yes, I am making a video on this very soon, so let's stay tuned for that one because it is coming. And always make sure that you wind the windows down just a little bit, just to get rid of those scum lines, because it can make such a difference. It can be the difference between whether someone actually calls you back again or they don't. I mean, it just shows that you care as well. I'm spraying the bodywork with a product called Cobalt which offers a nanotech beading effect and it looks the nuts like it's perfect and to be fair it is a good all rounder so if you want something that's quick and easy to use I mean I've done so many videos on other products but this is a really good trade product you can buy a lot of it in bulk and it costs very little money. For the tyres I'm using High Style by Autosmart. Now there's two methods of doing this. You can either slap it on with a brush 
or use a sponge I do a combination of both so like I start off with a brush get it all on there and then I use a sponge to work it in just to sort of clean it up and give it a nicer matte finish There you have it, one restored Range Rover Evoque. Now I'm going to guess by the time I actually get around to uploading this video, the car will be worse again. So I will be doing more filming on this car hopefully in the near future. Thanks for watching guys and get ready because we've got another video coming out in the next couple of days. I'll see you later. Bye bye.